today's show, we have a list of ways to help your kids' vocabulary, have great-looking skin, and grow a garden indoors. Plus, I think air travel's horrible. So we have tips for when you fly, and... There's no crying in baseball! We look back at 30 years of a league of their own. <laughs> Got em! But first... Investing is one of the easiest things you can do. With inflation on the rise, how to make your money grow. You just have to start somewhere. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey everyone, I'm Christina Guerrero. And I'm Jimmy Rhodes. Record inflation is hitting most of us pretty hard and it's impossible to avoid when it's affecting essentials like gas and groceries. Yeah, and of course these higher prices have most of us looking for ways to save, but there is one way to take advantage of this tough economic time, investing. Learning how to put your money to work for your future when times are tough is our featured story at the top of the list. Inflation isn't making our lives easier, but in order to make sure we have enough for the future, it's important we're doing one key thing. Honestly, investing is the, one of the easiest things you can do. And to learn how and why you should be investing right now, we turn to Jake Gutman, founder of Rosevest Financial. First, he says you have to think long term. Investing as a whole is rooted in the long term. You know, I have a hard time believing that Walmart is going to stop selling band-aids no matter who's president, no matter what the inflationary environment is. That's really what you're investing in, is ingenuity. It's the ability to adapt, evolve, grow, and by being a long-term investor, you get to participate in it. That's the beautiful part. And if you take advantage of the timing, it could mean you're buying at a discount. Now, let's say that discount is 25%. We're so quick to run to the store on Black Friday and try and get a flat screen TV for 25% off. But when the companies that manufacture it are 25% off for ownership in that company, suddenly we cower. Buying one TV at a discount may be great in the short term, but it's important to look ahead. Because I would rather own shares in that company that produces the TVs that will allow me to buy more in the future than buy one TV now that does not serve me a purpose other than to consume. And Jake says investing is the best way to stay ahead of inflation. I'd probably look at the data. Okay, now data, as much as we don't like it or it confuses us, does not lie. So if you put up $1,000 in the S&P in 1970, and as of March 2020, that would be $121,353. Because over time, there are highs and lows in the market. And during that time period, if you miss the single best day by pulling your money out early, you'd have a 10.37% decrease in the wealth you could have earned. If you miss the 15 best days, you have 64% less than you could have. And if you miss the 25 best days, you could be missing 77% of what you could have made. Finally, even if you just invest a little, it's worth it to build a habit. I think when you look at investing, it can be kind of a scary thing to take on, but it's important to eat it in chunks. But building that habit over time reaps benefits. It's the same as brushing your teeth, right? Now, for most of us, at least, I would hope, we brush our teeth every day or twice a day, or depending on who you are, maybe more. But it's the same thing with investing. You just have to start somewhere. Any little bit you put toward your future can be worth something greater in the long run. That's my advice, is reframing these economic cycles in such a way to where you go, oh, wait, perhaps there's an opportunity here. Investing during inflation is at the top of the list. Air travel these days, yikes. Am I right? Well, when you board a flight with a couple hundred complete strangers, it's a lot of moving parts and a lot of different personalities. So how do you make it as easy as possible? Well, you start by following these flight etiquette tips. Air travel has a long history of romance and excitement. Oh yeah, and nightmare situations. I know there are probably some frequent flyers out there who find something like comforting and sacred in the airport routines, but most of the time I think air travel is horrible. But it helps if you work with your fellow passengers. Meredith Dietz, writer and comedian, shares some unbreakable rules for flight etiquette. 
For starters, be smooth at security. You are going to be in line for a long time at the airport. That gives you a lot of time to think strategically about how you're going to get through security. Don't empty your water bottle at the last minute or take forever finding your ID and ticket. And take your belt and shoes off in advance. When it comes to being prepared, all the resources are available to you. Don't wait until you're in the airport to address your security questions. Anything you're curious about when you're packing, you can figure out online. Next, be courteous with your carry-ons. Don't put your overhead baggage anywhere but the seat in front of you, because theoretically, that's all the space that's designated to you. Don't be the person who puts their luggage in the first compartment, then walks to the back of the plane. All you're doing is stealing that spot from somebody else and causing a lot of chaos and making someone else check their bag. Next, when it's time to get off the plane, wait your turn. When you're still waiting in the plane and everyone gets up before the line is actually moving, two things happen. The flow of traffic gets chaotic with everyone reaching for their luggage. Secondly, it really contributes to that feeling of antsiness. So you're kind of transferring your own anxiety to everyone around you. Finally, step away from the baggage carousel. I think people are letting their desires to get out of the airport and get to their destination get in the way of logical thinking. Clogging up the area where the bags come out doesn't really save you time. If everyone's doing that, the second you see your bag, you're just going to have to work your way through a crowd and kind of do the, a funny little jog to get your bag. So move down the carousel where there's less people and relax. And even if it has to go around once and you have to wait for it to come back, you're really only losing a minute of your life, but you're gaining a lot more peace of mind. Taking the pain out of plane travel with flight etiquette. Okay, get this. Here in the U.S., more than half of adults have a lower than sixth grade level of literacy. But top of my head, I'd guess pretty much everyone knows how to play tic-tac-toe. So maybe the key to instilling a love of reading is to make it fun like the games we play. Teresa Strasser is looking into the gamification of learning. While this looks like a typical smartphone game, it's actually a learning tool created from the ground up to teach children to read. Instead of taking an education stuff and then put a game veneer on top of it, you build a game from scratch and the content is the education. This is known as the gamification of learning and Pierre Lagrange, chairman of education company Mrs. Wordsmith, is here to show us some examples. Starting with the word tag smartphone game. In this action-adventure game for kids in second grade and up, you tag new words. On average, children learn three new words a day. May sound like nothing, three new words a day, but these are new words that you learn in addition to what you pick up from your day to day. Pierre says the goal of the game is building your child's vocabulary, a critical step in the learning process. Vocabulary is the biggest determinant to reading and comprehension. And the numbers are terrifying. If you don't have the right level of reading by grade four, you're probably not going to finish high school. You can find Word Tag on the App Store and Google Play. There is a free version and a paid subscription, which runs about $10 per month. Next up is a web-based computer game for kids aged one and up. Teach your monster to read. In this game, your child creates a monster and takes it on a journey of fun and literacy. Tap on all the buttons that make the sound. The companion YouTube channel offers fun music videos for children to sing along and learn. Monster treasure hunt, monster treasure hunt. The game is totally free. Find it at teachyourmonster.org. We'll wrap up by dealing a hand of phonics cards with the blah, blah, blah game. Normally a dry, tedious topic, blah, blah, blah brings the fun. You have something that's dead boring, that's essential, and that you need a parent or an educator to work with you because all the research is showing that at every level of childhood, you really learn when you've got an interaction with a grown up. It's a fast paced game that kids four and older can pick up easily. Find it online for about $30. Having fun while learning to read, playing the literacy game. Still to come, a list of skincare procedures to make your neck 
it look great. The first laser that I absolutely love for the neck is going to be RF microneedling. And countertop gardens that are easy to grow. Fill one tray. The whole oasis is fully filled. Plus, she doesn't look like that much competition. That could be competition, I think. Swing for the fences with a new league of their own. These are different characters. Next on the list. Welcome back. Now at the dinner table, not every part of the turkey is, shall we say, equally appreciated, like the turkey neck, which useless information. That little flap is called the waddle. Well, I don't know how turkeys feel about their waddle, but us humans really don't like that flap of loose skin under the chin. Well, never fear. Hattie D. Jamal has ways to take care of this unwanted sagging skin spa style. The sagging skin under a turkey's neck is called a waddle. Turkeys can't sweat, so it helps them release excess heat. But that's not what it does for us. What is turkey neck exactly? Yeah, so um, as we age, we get skin laxity on our faces, but not just our face, we get it on our neck too. And that's how we can get that extra double fold underneath the neck and the skin kind of just hangs and it reminds you of a turkey. Megan Rout is the lead registered nurse and clinical trainer at Derma Health, and she says it doesn't have to be Thanksgiving to encounter turkey neck. There's a couple of different reasons why you can get the turkey neck. Number one is our neck doesn't have as many oil glands as our face. The second reason is we move our neck a lot more than we move our face. And let's not forget about sun damage too. But no matter the cause, Megan is sharing a few ways to keep turkey neck at bay. Starting with laser treatments. The first laser that I absolutely love for the neck is gonna be RF microneedling. RF microneedling is a two-point laser. The microneedling portion is designed to help with skin texture, while the radio frequency can help with stimulating deep dermal collagen. But that's not your only option. Exilis is another amazing laser that has that same component of radio frequency. It's got the RF, but it also has ultrasound in it. These lasers have very little downtime because they help with mild cases. But if that's not the case for you, Megan suggests... CO2 laser is more of an ablative laser for more severe laxity. There's more downtime with the CO2 treatment, but Megan says it can get much deeper to really tighten loose skin. Next, to get that chiseled jawline, injectable treatments can help. What if you've got a little bit of some mental fullness here? We want to, that definition, that snatched jawline. We want that separation between those two areas. So we'll do some Kybella to debulk the area. The same injectables used to treat wrinkles on our face can be used on our necks. We can throw in some Botox in those platysmal bands to help tighten the neck back up. Once you remove that fullness, you'll get a slight skin retraction. You'll have more definition in your neck and it won't hang as much as it normally would prior to the injections. While these treatments can help reduce the appearance of turkey neck, at the end of the day, prevention is key. And Megan suggests topicals. Retinol is an amazing product that you can use on your neck that's going to help. It has vitamin A. Vitamin A causes that cellular turnover. Retinol can help defend against wrinkles and smooth skin texture. Number two, you can use something like an alpha lipoic acid. That's going to add hydration back into the neck. And then always SPF, a mineral-based sunscreen, something with zinc or titanium above SPF 30, and put it on every day. Just a few ways to take the wobble out of your gobble. A new study from the University of Florida shows how gardening can have a beneficial impact on a person's mental health, particularly anxiety and depression. And bonus, recently we've been seeing a bumper crop of cool countertop gardens that look great for growing fruits and veggies inside your home. Here are three standouts you can buy right now. Coming in at number one, the Legro Modular Garden. With Legro, nature lovers can build, cultivate, and enjoy their own indoor oasis blooms. Legrowers combine various building blocks to create their own customized desktop garden. Fill one tray, the whole oasis is fully filled. Planters, grow lights, and humidifiers all snap together so you can make your own sweet gardening setups. Music's known to promote plant growth, so maybe that's why they also sell Bluetooth speaker modules. They even have a Lego-like kit called the Legro Rainforest that looks super zen. Thank you for your interest in Legro. Their bundles start at around 50 bucks at legro.co. At number two, the Pico Palm Size Planter. Pico is your self-watering, self-lit companion that takes care of plants. It self-waters up to 10 days and it has an adjustable grow light. It gives your plants the power of the sun and grows along with them. And it has multiple mounts so you can stick it, hang it, or place it 
on pretty much every surface around you. Dear Nature, welcome home. This one's going for 50 bucks at altafarm.com. And third on our indoor gardens list, the Botanium Soil-Free Planter Pot. In Botanium, you can grow herbs like basil, thyme, or mint. You can also grow vegetables like tomatoes or chili. It includes a growing medium and liquid plant nutrients that last for around six months. After you have connected it, Botanium will water the plant several times per day and it can't be overwatered thanks to the special growing medium. And it holds a whole month's worth of water. So you can leave your home without worrying. And there is less guesswork. Within a few days, you should see your seeds sprout and you are on your journey to becoming an urban farmer. If you ask me, that one looks pretty slick. It'll set you back around 70 bucks at botanium.se. And those were three affordable indoor gardens that look pretty great for getting things growing. And coming up, the classic film A League of Their Own turned 30 this year. And the movie has an upcoming Amazon TV series. So we're looking at the lasting legacy of this hit movie. We'll be right back. Here's a quick list for you of tips if you're thinking about becoming an entrepreneur. First, be honest about what you want. What do you want your business to look like? What kind of money do you want to make? What kind of hours do you want to work? Second, figure out your top skills and interests. What are you really good at? What do you know a lot about? And what are you really passionate about? And third, get inspired by like-minded people. You want to surround yourself with people who match your future. Start going to meetup groups. Start joining Facebook groups. Start going to conferences and live events. For more tips on elevating your career, head on over to thelisttv.com. Welcome back. Friends, today on The Watch List, we are celebrating a movie classic. A League of Their Own was released in the summer of 92, and to celebrate its 30th anniversary, we have some of the best of what this iconic film had to offer. Batter up. Oh, a League of Their Own is the beloved classic that brought the story of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League to the big screen. We got it! It stepped up to the plate and is so prestigious, it's even preserved in the U.S. National Film Registry for being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. It's a very, very resonant film and a very empowering film. We spoke to Mike Michon, head of the moving image section at the Library of Congress, to help us celebrate this iconic film. All right, time for the song and dance. We begin with its success, because on top of gifting us some iconic quotes... There's no crying! There's no crying in baseball! The comedy was also a box office record breaker, becoming the highest grossing baseball movie of all time. <laughs> Got him! These women who played in this league were real pioneers, and this film is so celebratory of what they did. Which is why the film has left a lasting legacy of women's empowerment. Oh, oh. Under the direction of Penny Marshall, the film featured Gina Davis, Madonna, and Rosie O'Donnell, just to name a few, and impacted the way people see women in sports. Penny Marshall really goes out of her way to focus on the women. These are the women's stories who are negotiating this really tumultuous period in American history, and they're coming you know, into their own. I think Penny Marshall and the scriptwriters do a really, really nice job of drawing all of those things together. Play great. Like you. And now, 30 years later, the future looks bright. She doesn't look like that much competition. That could be competition, I think. The TV adaptation of the same name drops on Prime Video this Friday, starring Abby Jacobson, Shantae Adams, and Darcy Carden. It uses the same historical period, but these are different characters, different storylines. They're going to be bringing out more racial issues than were there in the film. We're here for the tryouts. I don't think you understand. This is the All-American League. We're pretty All-American. Obviously, in a series, you've got a lot more time, a lot more real estate in which you can draw out some of those themes. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing it. Hey, Dollface. We're celebrating the best of a league of their own. It's been a thin slice of heaven. Bye. On the watch list.
First of all, loved that movie growing up. There's no crying in baseball. I mean, best line ever. Secondly, can we mention the theme song, Madonna? This used to be my playground. Hey, she can act, she can sing. That Madonna is going places. I mean, one day we'll see. Coming up, friends, something else from the 90s. It's making a comeback. Why bolo ties, that's right, I said bolo ties, are back in style. That's next. Welcome back, friends. All right, it is time for what's last on our list. Jimmy, what comes to mind when I say bolo tie? Uh, completely out of date fashion accessory. So, of course, I own one right here. Of course you do. Well, <laughs> Jimmy, you might accidentally be in fashion because the Wall Street Journal wrote an article about it. Okay, Post Malone, Quavo, Nick Jonas, the epitome of cool, right? Sporting bolos at events. And this guy, Damson Idris, rocking a bolo tie more recently at the BET Awards. Also, if you just put in hashtag bolos, oh man, variety of styles for both men and women. Okay, they took that idea from me. They were first popularized in about the 1940s, mostly in the Southwest and West. And today, you know, a great place to find them is state sales. But you could also pay a lot more. Prada has them. They're going for 525 bucks. Jimmy, you just took a cool idea like a bolo tie and uncooled it by saying estate sale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fashion for dead people, but it's also on Prada. I mentioned Prada. <laughs> and that, friends, is last on our list. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Here's what's coming up tomorrow on The List. Wow, I'm tempted to lick it, but I won't. <laughs> Discover the health benefits of Himalayan salt. It's good for people that may be suffering with asthma. Plus, when you lie down and shut your eyes, picture having exactly what you want. Simple tips to have a better tomorrow. And sing along with Shawn Mendes as a crocodile. That's tomorrow on The List.